from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. That's your cue. Welcome to APTV episode 473 for Thursday, January 12th, 2023. This week we have banter, news, updates, something completely different, plus a contest winner, winner, and a new contest. Hey, Eric. Yes, Steph. Hello, Steph. How are you? Oh. You have a joke for me, don't you? Fine and dandy. I do indeed have okay. a joke for you. Let's have it. <laughs> what do you call a horse that has fallen down? Wait, no. What did the horse say when he fell down? <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What did the horse say when, <laughs> when he fell down? Help, I've fallen and I can't giddy up. Oh, no. That's a good one. That's a, help, I've fallen and I can't get the up. Steph. Eric. Which celebrity, please, which celebrity is always ready to eat cereal? Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we take a little break here, but we're not going to. No, we have to. That's where they play. We'll take a break. Steph. Eric. It's very nice to see you. I cannot remember the last time we were on camera together. Do you? Can oh, you? Oh, goodness. No. No. Well, it must have been last year sometime. Years ago. Uh, since we, since the last time you were on the show, we've changed the name, as you, as I'm sure you noticed. I'm getting used to it. Yeah, you had a little trouble saying it there, didn't you? ATPV. Yeah, ATPV. <laughs> this is um, Another place we've been, we've, we, we, you haven't seen the location bumper, but you've been to the location bumper. It mm-hmm. was World Market. Oh. Oh, I have been there. You have been there? We have been there together. Or Cost Plus, as some call it. Well, that's in here. That's in here. It all began in the late 50s when a San Francisco businessman turned traveler and importer began selling shiploads of hand-woven wicker from one of the city's piers. He turned his shiploads into a storefront on San Francisco's famed Fisherman's Wharf in 1958. That was actually the first uh, Cost Plus World Market I've ever been to. You went Not to the in OG. 1958, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, World Market now has 242 locations in the United States, and apparently only in the United States. Uh, and until 2021, the company was Cost Plus World Market, but now they simply use World Market. So, yes, I do get a lot of ribbing because I call it Cost Plus World Market. I, the that, first time you said that, I had no idea what you were talking about. <laughs> that's the same with Justin. Mm-hmm. But it, it's still on the bags. That's valid. It's still on the bag. That's valid. And I learned something that day. And now I know why they have so many baskets. Yeah, they started with baskets. Lots and lots of baskets. And and if the store is still there on Fisherman's Wharf, it's a, it's a huge and lovely store. But of course, that's the first one I went into, so it was quite impressive. And it's, they're, they're all quite nice. Has it ruined all world markets? Not really, because they all sell candy. That's fair. They all sell candy. Uh, but it's right down the street, about... What, four and a half miles down the street? Yeah, it's a while <laughs> down the it, street. It's, yeah, it's a while down the street. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday, January 13th, I'm sure you know this already, Steph, is National <gasps> Rubber Ducky Day. Oh, it sounds like I'm surprising you. It looks like I'm surprising you. I am thrilled. I don't know if I'm surprised or not, but I'm just thrilled. This was brought to my attention on more than one occasion by one of our audience members, Greg M. So I put it here, National Rubber Ducky Day, tomorrow, Friday, January 13th. According to a 1973 Sesame Street calendar, Rubber Ducky's birthday is January 13th. So we use that day to celebrate National Rubber Ducky Day. How do you celebrate? Spend time with your favorite rubber ducky. How many rubber duckies do you have? At don't least one. At least one? You I do. definitely have one. Okay. I don't currently have any, so. I hear they make bath time so much fun. So much fun. I heard that too. Mm-hmm. That's long. I looked at the lyrics. You know what you should get instead of a rubber ducky? What should I get instead of a rubber ducky step? Sailor Probe Your Slim Line Friends Sally Edition. <gasps> Sally, I did like Sally. Yeah, yeah. I th- was she a rubber ducky or is she a chicken? Uh, well, I think she's a chicken, but we'll call her a rubber ducky for this show. She could be a rubber chicken. And I like Sally. I like yeah. Sally. We'll get back to Sally, because she's a cartridge converter. (laughs) Oh, perfect. January, as you well know, Ms. Gill, uh, is National Hoppy Month. It's true. Uh, uh, Brian and I mentioned it last uh, week on APTV. Uh, In January, you celebrate the Hobby Month by sharing one of your favorite hobbies, trying a new hobby, and or taking a class. Or we're trying to get Um, a hobby. Or trying to get a hobby. I, I brought this up because I wanted to ask you if you've started any new hobbies. I, I I joined a choir. You joined a choir. See, yeah. I knew that, but I wasn't going to say it unless you mentioned it. Ha-ha. How did that go? It went, well, I've only been in one rehearsal, but they didn't kick me they out. Didn't kick so, out they? so far, so good. So far, so good. And you more or less enjoyed it. Yeah. All right. I like singing. You will have to keep us posted on that. Mm-hmm. Now, that's just a hobby, right? 
nobody's paying me yet, so okay. yes. Okay. Uh, this weekend, starting tomorrow, Friday, and continuing Saturday and Sunday, that would be January 13th, 14th, and 15th, yes, it starts on National Rubber Ducky Day, is the Philadelphia Pen Show. You've never been to the Philadelphia Pen Show. Nope, never even been to uh, Philadelphia. Never even been to Philadelphia. You should come Friday and Saturday. It's 10 to 5. On Sundays, 10 to 4. Just to mention a few of the exhibitors, vendors who will be there is Pilot. Marumon Paper from Japan is coming. I'm excited about that. Fountain Pen Hospital, Kenro, Shon Design, Franklin Christoph, luxury brands who are distributors for Platinum, among many other brands. Uh, the Philadelphia Pen Collectors Group, four Nibmeisters, and so much more details can be found at phillypenshow.com. I, of course, am going to be there. I will be there. And there's a comment coming up in the future here, uh, so I'll give a little bit more information. But wait, yes, there's more. Are you familiar, Seth, with Inko Rimo? So familiar! Do you know what it stands for? International Correspondence by Writing Month. Why am I... Why There's am no I, buy in there. <laughs> it's correspond cor by writing? Correspondence Writing Month. Oh, or Writing Correspondence. Gotcha. Correspondence Writing Month. Yeah, the International Correspondence... It's our 10th year. We've been doing this for 10 years. Um, Happy 10th birthday. Can you read that? So yes. let everybody know what it is? Rumor has it that Incorimo challenges you to handwrite and mail slash deliver one letter, card, note, or postcard every day during the month of February. And to for more information, go to Incorimo.org. Yeah, it's uh, fun. And all you do is write. Right. I'll probably send you something. But yeah, I send you things even when it's not Incorimo, don't I? It's true. It's true. You are, do you are I like Incorimo. Do I ever get a response? Uh, one day you're going to get so many responses. It's going to be... See, I, I'll harassment. tell you a little something between us. I sent her a couple of letters in French. Very, very simple French, because I need a French pe pen pal. Did she respond? And it's not because you don't speak French. No. <laughs> you could easily respond. Okay. Moving so right along. Hashtag Steph shaming. Yes. I need to make myself a little sign. Is the worst pen now pal Now everybody ever. knows. Worst pen pal ever. In other news, AP Chicago is closed this week. It is closed today because Brian and Lisa... We should mention our... Well, they've been in Florida. Uh, they are emphatically not here, neither no. of them. Uh, today's Thursday, so they're actually coming back uh, to Chicago. Brian will be back here tomorrow, Friday, for National Rubber Ducky Day. Regular store hours in Chicago will resume uh, on Saturday, the 14th. So, yeah, Lisa took the entire week off, and they went to visit her mother in Florida. Good for her. I hope they come Good. back with tans. What washes up on beaches? Microwaves. As you know, during APTV, we usually do that intro stuff that we just did, and then we do uh, just in stuff, and then we do coming soon stuff. But uh, we are not going to do that, are we? I, well... No, because not. we decided to do something mm -hmm. completely different and because we something. are unsupervised. Nobody's, nobody was here to stop us. And so we're doing a few of our favorite things. Steph and I put, uh, put our heads together and I said, Steph, why don't you pick a, a pen, a paper, and an ink that you think, what did I say, is under, uh, under underappreciated. Appreciated or that I like very much. Yeah, and, or maybe and both. I will do the same. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we have each picked inks and pens and papers, and we're going to start with inks, and it looks like I'm up first. Uh -huh. I went to my um, uh, Ink of the Week pages from last year and turned right to Zaza, because Zaza. that is an exceptional ink that I believe is underappreciated. Um, nice shading. The Sound of Rain inks are inspired by the different sounds that rain makes as it falls. Zaza itself is inspired by the sound of rushing water after summer storms. Sailor Shikiori Zaza fountain pen ink is a muted shade of blue that leans toward turquoise. Do you agree that it leans toward turquoise? Hmm. This is our color expert. She's not going to agree. I never agree with anybody about anything. <laughs> I don't think I see any turquoise, but it I... is a nice blue. Yeah. It's a subdued, not in your face, very pleasant to look at blue. I, I definitely. It's... I don't see turquoise, but you'd have to. I, well, there yeah. would have to be green in there, right? I, I feel like it might have some green in it, but I don't. I don't see a lot of turquoise either. It's more. I would call it more of a blue black. We do sell that in a three milliliter sample, and it comes in the twenty milliliter. Uh, ice cube mm. bottle that I like to call it. It also comes in the cutest little three pack of cartridges. And they have a little cartridge. And case. it comes with a plastic holder. And it's just, if you can open it, 
um, it, I, it's just perfect. It's just, a, but I don't currently have a sailor. These are only for sailor, so I'm going to have to get the Sally pen. Well, there you go. Now, Problem solved. Uh, am I allowed to put this ink in Sally? Yes, because rubber duckies sit in water, so you can have blue ink. It's <gasps> thematically brilliant. appropriate. She is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Now you've chosen an ink, and I knew you were going to choose this ink yeah. before I even asked. Nobody, nobody was surprised by my choice. Of I ink. was ready to choose it myself because uh, I think yes, I agree with you. It's underappreciated. What is this ink? It is Colorverse USA series, fabulous Las Vegas. And we both own bottles of it, so we just both <laughs> brought it. We're, we're going to clink on that, right? Cheers. Or clunk on that. Yeah, it's more of a clunk, but oh, they're just so cute. Even the bottle is cute. I could, I could it's go a, on and on and on and it, on. It is a cute size bottle, mm -hmm. fifteen milliliters. Uh, so a bright I, shade of pink, it's inspired by those neon lights of Las Vegas, Nevada. It's only fifteen milliliters. Is that the same size as your sailor, or is that a little smaller? This is this one. Yeah, this is twenty. Oh, right, so. Um, Your ice cube is just a bit bigger. So I have only used this with a syringe to refill cartridges because my Hemingway is not going to fit in there. That's fair. Uh, uh, the, the the vanishing point might fit in there. Oh, maybe yeah. I I've usually uh, usually used this with syringes and cartridges too all the time. Now I'm curious. But to see. Uh, this was one of your top five pink inks, as I recall. So it was, um, and probably one of my top five all time inks, all just time. because it's so. It is fabulous, Pretty. is it not? It, it is, is fabulous. just so fabulous. It is correctly it's named fabulous. It Justin sheens, will, it shades, it shimmers. It's Justin just... will pull some footage of the samples you made with it. because I looked through my book for it because I was positive that I had done Fabulous Las Vegas. I have not done Fabulous Las Vegas as an ink of the week. Oh, my goodness. What I'm remembering is that I showed it off for something uh, during a Sunday brunch. That sounds about right, yeah. And I didn't do it as Ink of the Week because I knew you were going to use it for one of your top fives. Plus, you'd have had glitter everywhere, everywhere. for months. Everything you touched, glittery. I, I, I don't. Which is? I like the look of glitter. I don't like glitter. In, it's worse than sand. It's everywhere. Um, but it's okay in an ink because it, it doesn't get everywhere unless yeah. you get the ink everywhere. But then you've got a bigger problem. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, was just, I, I think I probably have some of some of that glitter somewhere on my floor. But you chose okay. the paper. I did. Um, you chose a paper that I really like in a size that I don't often use. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. I've got the Rhodia number 19 staple bound meeting pad in A4. So um, Rhodia paper is fantastic. Yes. Love, love Rhodia paper. And we, what I like about the meeting, why do you like Rhodia so much, the paper? Well, uh, it's something that we often use. It's nice and bright and white, fountain pen friendly, all of those nice things. The meeting pads have a section across the top, section here, and then little action steps over here yes. and i just find that, it, that having it sectioned off is very nice for me yeah. I, I guess that's how i think yeah even even before i realized what those different sections were for and i was just like oh why is there a line in my lined notebook i i think uh i was jotting things down on one side and the, the fact that there was an action column the fact that that's even a thing that's already on the page reminds me to think okay what do i do with this information where I and now this is what I've learned. You know, this is what I do, and I just I love having that that prompt right there, and especially for meeting purposes, but even just for like note taking or journaling sometimes. Yeah, I'm, I can't say that I've ever used it like that. Right? I usually use the three sections for different things. I know it says actions, but it's sometimes a to do list will go there. Yeah, yeah. To do list. I do that too. Um. That's your paper. Mm -hmm. I chose an Exocompta. Though that brought back a lot of memories. Did it? Yeah. Well, I chose the index cards. Um, I like index cards. I like to make flashcards. I like to take notes. They're always in my my top desk drawer. So if I just need to scratch something down, because usually I just have Hobonichi's in front of me. And so what you want is a, a scratch piece of paper. This is my scratch paper. Not because it isn't good paper. It's it's 205 GSM, so it's, it's good thick cardstock. Well, once you become a dyed-in-the-wool fountain pen user, even your scratch paper has to be... This is my scratch paper. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like to use these for flashcards if I'm trying to learn something new, because, you know, it's National Hobby Month and all that. Well, you, you like these because... They they bring me back to like 2015, 2016. All the way back then. All the way back to when I first met you and we were all in the same office. And my I notes from Eric always going. came in the form of a little index card on my desk. Were there lots of notes from Eric? 
I don't think there were very many, but it was always very clear when it was going to be an Eric note because that was an Exacomp to index card. But I think they were colored. Yeah, I was going to say they didn't. We didn't have the white ones then. I'm not sure they made the white ones then. But now that they come with in white, those are my favorite ones. The other ones are are different colors. They have four different colors, which and could be handy. They're but, graph, but, which does come in handy. But mm-hmm. for my own scratch paper, I like the white ones. Oh, you can swab like inks. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're on to pens, and it looks like we're starting with yours. Ah. And you, you, you have one of these. I have one of these. <laughs> we actually have the same one. Almost. And, uh, but they come in lots of different varieties. What is this? This is the dun 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 platinum 3776 century. The, this one is the shape of heart. This is also the shape of heart. <gasps> Twinsies. Twinsies. And uh, the audience will note that, uh, yes, I, I got a pen that has rose gold trim. It was only available in rose gold trim. And I will be the first to admit it looks fantastic with rose gold trim. It really it does. does. And I believe the nib. Also rose gold. Also rose gold. And uh, this is my first platinum pen. This is my th- first 3776. Wow. Well, this... I was excited to try out their nibs, and I have to say, I love it. It's a little bit springier than my than my Sailor nib, which I also love very much. But those are probably my two favorite writing pens. This is my, my Sailor. This is also my first platinum, if you don't count the preppies, which you don't. No. This is my first gold-nibbed uh, platinum. And it's fantastic. I really, really like this pen. I got the fine nib. I believe you did not. I've got the medium. You've got a medium. And that is your preferred nib. That is. That is I'm a medium gal. And I prefer fine because I write small. Um, this is Japanese fine, so it's a very, it's, it's practically an extra fine. Um, my extra fine, for instance, in Lamy is is probably wider than your medium in, in a platinum. Um, I like the shape, the cigar shape. This one I like because it has the crystals on the top, and there's two hearts oh, hidden gotta, in there. Got to find them now. The, the but there's a wide variety of body options on this. Uh, the 3776 doesn't get as much attention as it deserves, and these nibs are stellar. I am very impressed with this nib. Uh, it's a I mentioned it's a fine, and I, I needed something for Hobonichi's that writes fine because the squares there are small, and with Tomoe River paper, the ink kind of sits on top until it dries. So, with a, a wider nib, a broader nib, that's a lot more drying time. This is fantastic. This is really good with a Hobonichi. It's a 3776. Do you know why it's called a 3776? That is the height in feet? Meters. Meters. That makes much more sense. <laughs> I need the height in dishwashers, please. <laughs> <laughs> the height in meters of Mount Everest, right? No. Oh. Just a Japanese pen. I'm Mount. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mount. I haven't written right Fuji. if you want to look. Not Fuji. <laughs> right. It is the height in uh, uh, in meters of Mount Fuji. I said Everest, and then my brain completely shorted out. <laughs> well, that is the famous one. That's, everybody knows Everest. Everest is, uh, probably don't know this, I'm going to spill the beans, is also the name of your cat. <laughs> it's true. That's what broke my brain. It's yes. oh, kitty. Oh, kitty. <laughs> Okay, moving on to my pen. Yes, we can talk about your pen now. I'm sorry. I've gone on for ages. Um, I think it, it it probably gets attention, but I, th- I really think every person who collects fountain pens needs one of these. And that is, of course, the Lamy 2000. It is, a I think, a gorgeous design. It was introduced in 1966 with, of course, a Bauhaus aesthetic. And it's been in continuous production for over 50 years. In fact, I think we're coming up on 60 years. Wow. Um, Bauhaus. Stood and stands the, the test of time. Macrolon body with a brush steel section. Mm-hmm. Um, the tolerances are so tight that you can't even see the seam between the turning knob because it is a piston filler and the body. And there's also a section you can remove there. You can remove the section, but you cannot find the seam. You can if you dig into it with your fingernail, but you don't want to dig into it. Uh, it's fiberglass. I'm a... It's just a beautiful pen. If I hadn't seen anyone twist that seam, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like a uh, uh, hundred of them in a frame on the wall. <laughs> or maybe just a big blown up diagram, uh, a CAD drawing of it. Um, they're 
very affordable when you consider what they are a, a piston filler f- macrolon fiberglass um, gold nib do you have one i don't you don't have one come to think of it i don't think i own any piston fillers no, well oh. they take some getting used to because uh, they're a bit they take more time to clean well, i like piston fillers until i'm cleaning them and that's when i don't like piston fillers i just stick with one ink Keep it forever. In addition to the fountain pen in the Macrolon, they also have the fountain pen in stainless steel. This one is also mine. They also have a mechanical pencil in both 0.5 and 0.7 millimeter. These are both mine. Uh, they also have the ballpoint that has four different colors in it. You've seen this one, right? Yeah, that's... So you put the color up. This is blue. So if blue is facing up and you open it, then the blue comes out. Close it. Turn it so the red is up and the red will come out. It's ingenious. I spent such a long time trying to figure out how that worked. <laughs> they have, uh, in addition, in stainless steel, uh, they have, uh, they also have a rollerball in the Macrolon, a rollerball in the stainless steel. They have a mechanical pencil in the stainless steel, and they have the next one I want is the ballpoint in the stainless steel. Isn't it just gorgeous? Ooh. Just gorgeous. You may touch it. Yay. I but just... you could actually have an entire collection of Lamy 2000s, and none of them would be the same. And then, of course, you need uh, the fountain pen in all kinds of different nibs because it comes in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, oblique, medium, oblique, broad, and oblique, double broad. Holy Have you ever cow. tried an oblique broad in anything? Uh, uh, medium, because you like medium. I've never tried an oblique medium. Well, we're going to have to hook you up. Ooh. You might like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know that at some point in my life I will end up owning a Lamy 2000. It is, we have it's, it's just we have a matter them. of time. We could hook you up today. It's true. I, I, I know a place. <laughs> you know a place. <laughs> what did the shy pebble say? I wish I was a little bolder. Steph, you were not here last week. I was here last week with Brian, but you know what happened last Sunday. I do hear a rumor that... that Justin is older than he was last week. older than he was last week. Last week's contest was to enter Just Wish Justin a Happy Birthday, and I believe everyone on the planet wished Justin a happy birthday. Probably didn't even need to be asked. Probably not, but it was a contest. So you had to put it in writing, and we had many entries, and uh, Justin would like me to say thank you on his behalf to everyone. He did, in fact, have a very happy birthday. He did nothing, apparently, which is exactly what he wanted, Uh, so he got his wish. Uh, I'm going to read some comments. All right. Uh, most of them will say happy birthday, so just bear with me. Kari Hajduk, Hajduk says, happy birthday, Justin. Hope you have a good one. Obviously, that's now past tense. Hope you had a good one. Johnny Montalvo, happy birthday, Justin. Good job keeping those two goofballs on track or at least on the screen. I think he meant goofballs, uh, Brian and me. I certainly uh, wasn't talking about you. Surely not. Surely not. Surely not. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> Summer Pearls says, Happy birthday, Justin. You share the date with David Bowie. What? The subject of our book display at work this month, so you are automatically cool. Celebrate well. I will verify that. I want to share a birthday with David Bowie. How did I not realize that? (laughs) This is what (laughs) APTV is all about. (laughs) Jess Jessup says, Happy birthday, Justin. You share the day with my father and Elvis Presley. Did you know this, Justin? Elvis Presley's, Elvis Presley's birthday was Elvis Presley? Yeah. You had heard that. Fan, so. Oh, oh. <laughs> he planned that. <laughs> he enjoyed that. Mary Hodges. Eric has spoken. This is being read because she says my name. Eric has spoken. The color of the year is purple. That's, I announced that last, last week because of my uh, Ink Studio 750 is going to be my color of the year. Oh, perfect. Yeah, the color of the year is purple. I can totally get behind that. Happy birthday, Justin. You all seem to have fun at work. All the laughter will help keep you young. That's my I, secret. I agree. I was going to say that's my secret. I'm 102, you know. <laughs> Kathy Cullum... Kathy Cullen Stern, happy birthday to Justin. I look forward to the brunch on Sunday, which was last Sunday. I hope you enjoyed it, Kathy. I am considering going to the Philly Pen Show and need some pointers, as this would be my first pen show. Eric, what day are you going? So, Kathy, I hope you watched the Sunday brunch last Sunday because we gave you pointers. And if you did watch it, you'll know that I run the Philadelphia Pen Show, so I am there all three days. In fact, I'm there Thursday to Monday. Uh, The show runs Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm usually at the registration table where you buy or pick up your tickets. 
do say hello, I could, I, I thought, I have a vivid memory of having replied to this in YouTube and the reply is not there anymore. Because I said all that in a, in a reply and I also mentioned that on Saturday at the Pen Show, at 10 o'clock, uh, Aziza Asgarelli is giving a tour of the Pen Show floor. Oh, cool. Um, and which can be fun if you've never been to a Pen Show before because what do you do? You've... You went to Chicago. I have been to Chicago twice. probably remember the first time you went to Chicago. I definitely remember the first and the second, but especially the first. The first. What was your first impression? Was it uh, disorienting? I I was shocked at how how vast it was. I expected one room, and there were several, and then I expected a fair amount of people, and there were a lot of people. (laughs) There's a lot of people, yes. So uh, the tour is absolutely free. Um, so uh, I recommended that in the comment that has now disappeared. We do have a winner for last week's uh, contest. The winner is Todd. How would you say that? Gentle or genteel? Genteel. Genteel. Uh, Todd's. Uh, gentile. Gentile. Todd's comment is Happy birthday, Justin. With each passing year, you get more valuable. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Congratulations, Todd. Please write to me, Eric, at AndersonPens.com, and I will ask Brian. This is a $32, has nothing to do with Justin's age, $32 uh, credit to your Anderson Pens account. I haven't run this by you yet, but that's our next That's our next contest oh. for, for this week. You guys get to be us <laughs> this Justin's week. Justin's trying to look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, for this week's contest, please use the comment section below to name an underrated pen, ink, or paper. Something that you consider uh, needs a little bit more attention because uh, that's how I, I like to learn that way. It's, yeah. I will. I guarantee there will be something there that I've never heard of before. No, I love. I love to hear which things people swear by. Right, and I, uh, Lamy. I, 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 if I could only have one pen, would it be the Lamy Two Thousand? I don't know. I, it would be in a, in the running. I was I was gonna say I'm like oh, that kind of sounds like an yeah. admission. I think it would be in the running, but yeah. it's difficult to choose just one pen. So don't put me on the spot. Why'd you ask me a question? That's <laughs> what I'm here for <laughs> to ask the difficult, hard hitting questions. If you could choose only one ink, would it be the fabulous Las Vegas? Heck yeah! Really? <laughs> I could live with the the Zaza. Mm-hmm. I could absolutely live with the Zaza. My pens are going to be so hard to clean, but my words are going to be so fun to write. <laughs> so fun to write. Uh, so uh, this is a contest for a twenty dollar credit to your Anderson Pens account. Um, if you, to enter, just comment below uh, with an underrated pen, ink, or paper, something that you think needs more attention, and a random winner will be uh, announced next week on APTV. I won't be here next week. I'll be in town, but you're going to do it with yes. Brian next week. Brian and I, I will announce it, we promise. I, I will be fresh off a plane uh, uh, from Philadelphia. Uh, so I've already asked, and you've already said, yeah, you'll be happy to do it. So you could do two weeks in a row. Oh, well, that's fair. It's been a long time. I haven't seen y'all since before Christmas. Since before Christmas. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to do that. Would you like to start, or okay. shall I? Well, I'll, I'll start us okay. off. Thank you so much for joining us this week, guys. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can check us out on social media as Anderson Pens. I understand there is a store in Chicago. Do you know anything about it? Rumor has it. There's, it's on the ground floor of the Palmer House Hilton. Open seven days a week. In fact, I will confirm that rumor. It is definitely there. Except and it's closed today. Yeah. Open seven days a week <laughs> as long as those days aren't today. <laughs> and that, Is there a website? Find them at chicago.andersonpens.com Excellent. Um, please like this video and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're supposed to announce the, the pen in Brian's pocket, but he's not here, so he has no pocket and he has no pen. Even if he does have a pen in his pocket, we don't know what it is. That's right. I could have called him. We could guess. We could guess. Let's see. He doesn't have a pen in his pocket. He's in Florida on a beach somewhere. Unless... Unless... Oh, I'll, I'll I'll make a guess that's wrong. He's got his his, uh, his king of pen Which, fresca. King of pen fresca is the one he took to Florida with him. We'll ask him next week. All right. Ask him next week. I probably had some sort of little words of wisdom at the end, but uh, they escaped me at the moment. But they're coming back. We thought, Steph. <laughs> We thought it was our ability to love that made us human, but as it turns out, it is our ability to select all images with boats. 